Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. As we continue through our book of Genesis, <clears throat> watching how God is slowly going to fulfill these promises he has made to Abraham, we see this uh, encounter with Abraham and, and uh, God, the angel of the Lord, and uh, this back and forth and about Sodom and Gomorrah, destroy it or not destroy it. <laughs> And so we learn, uh, we're just reminded of the power of prayer, which is that conversation with God, and uh, the, the power of persistence, huh? persistent prayer, and, you know, daring to ask God things in prayer, and to intercede and step in the gap for, uh, for other people. Uh, and so here's, here's Abraham stepping in the gap for, for Sodom and Gomorrah and praying, you know, come on, Lord, if there's 50 righteous people, 45, 40, and he goes down and down and down. Too bad he stopped at 10, huh? He should have went like one more, just down five more. And maybe they would have been spared. Because, um, <clears throat> or maybe go down to one person, huh? <laughs> but sad to say, right, they don't even have 10 righteous people there in the city. Not even 10. And, it's, and there's a little play on words, you know, righteous, also translated sometimes upright, uprightness, you know, you're standing up, you're looking up, versus what we saw uh, with, with Cain in the beginning of Genesis, who was crestfallen. So, you know, are we crestfallen people or upright people, <laughs> you know? And, and so there's a little, there's that play on words there. We're called to be upright, righteous people in right relationship with God, standing upright, proud of who we are and what we're doing, <clears throat> confident that we're in obedience to God's will and his plans for our life. Uh, we learn <clears throat> this, um, it, this is the central focus, this intercessory prayer for others. We see the different parables that Jesus uses in the gospel that reflect this same teaching. Uh, <clears throat> there was a, he talks about one time this tree that was not bearing any fruit and how the, um, you know, he would, the gardener was begging the owner, okay, just give me a little more time. Let me just till the soil a little more, put a little more nutrients in the soil, water it some more, take care of it for a little more. Maybe next season it will grow fruit. You know, this prayer for more time, Lord, more time for righteousness to grow uh, through, through personal care of someone's life. And this is a good way we can reflect and look at our, our life today, our, what's going on in our world today, our church today, and reflect, you know, what's, what's our response when we hear, when, when, when we think some place is going to hell in a handbasket, you know? Do we step in like Abraham and begin to intercede on that place's behalf? Or do we just walk away, abandon? Well, burn it all, Lord. <laughs> or like James and John, and, you know. Let lightning come down from heaven and consume them, Lord. <laughs> that's, why, that's why Jesus called them thun, the sons of thunder, you know. How, how is our response to our world today? I know there's some people, you probably heard, know some too, heard of them. They already moved out of California, you know. All oh, California is done, basically. You know, they already gave up on California as far as being a righteous state, you know. This place they think is gone. It's going to be swallowed up in the ocean or something, you know. Some people, if they haven't already gone, they're already talking about it. I know a lot of young adults talking about it. They're going to go to Texas or Tennessee or whatever, some other place they feel is more conservative or traditional or still has some, some form of values. They've already given up on this place. You know, they tell me and share with me. They want me to rejoice in, in this news that they might move away to a, a better place. I say, well, what about us? Who's going to stay here, you know? Who's going to stay here and fight with us? For this land, who's going to stay here and fight with us for these people's hearts? Somebody's got to stay here and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, is this how we saw Jesus and the apostles? Did, did Jesus say, you know, run away and go find a little bubble to hide in? Or did he say, go out? Right? He said, go out. We're, you know, we're called to scatter the darkness. We're called to go out. Light has to shine brightly and go out, and it scatters the darkness. It pushes the darkness away. We don't run away from the darkness. 
you know? We don't all huddle together. And all these little light bulbs huddling together, these little candles huddling together. Maybe we can keep ourselves warm because we're so scared because the darkness is closing in. It's like we don't even know our core identity. Light scatters darkness. Darkness doesn't consume light. You know, we, we forgot who we are, what we're called to be. Jesus is the light of the world. He came into a dark world and began scattering the darkness one heart at a time, lighting people on fire with the light of God. That's our call, you know. And it begins, it's, it's, we have to just look at it so simple like Jesus did. Just one heart at a time, one person at a time. And if I just have to spend my whole life investing in one person to get them lighted up for God, on fire for God, then it's worth it. You know, then you just scatter darkness in one person's life. That's worth it. Who knows what that one person will do? And then, you know, just domino effect from there. And sometimes, I guess, you know, yeah, they look at the whole picture and get overwhelmed, right? You look at the, instead of looking at one tree, you look at the whole forest, you think, too much, <laughs> too much. But this is, this is all we're, we're called to do. Intercede in our conversation with God, in our prayer time with God. Intercede on their behalf. More time, Lord. We need a little more time, you know. You know, give them a chance, Lord. They haven't heard the authentic gospel, you know. They think being a Catholic is, is you know, going to play bingo on Saturday night, you know. They don't know the full gospel, you know. That's a, you know, they think being Catholic is part of a club or something, you know. They haven't heard the gospel. They haven't heard to be the truth about discipleship. They don't know what it means to follow you. You know, they think oh, Catholicism is all about just trying not to sin instead of actually trying to go out and do good and spread the kingdom of God and actually, uh, they don't have any idea what the Holy Spirit is and the life of the Holy Spirit that's supposed to flow through, through us and heal people's lives, cleanse people of leprosy today, raise them from the dead, free them of demonic oppression. They never heard that gospel preached Jesus. Give them a little more time, you know. They think all they're supposed to do is go to daily mass and pray their rosary and everything will be okay. They don't know there's anything more. Yeah. So we have to get more and the full gospel truth. Lord, give us more time to get the full gospel out there. We've been tricking ourselves. We've all been cafeteria Catholics and not realized it. <laughs> we need the full gospel, Lord, the full meal, all seven courses, Lord. Everything you got, we want your whole life. Give us more time, Lord. So this has to become some of our prayer. You know, oh, Lord, I'm sick of the, the president, or I'm sick of the pope, or I'm sick of the bishop, or I'm sick of this. Okay, well, stop. Okay, now take a breath. And I'll start praying for that person. Yeah? Lord, give them a little more time. Somehow they haven't heard the full gospel truth. Somehow they need a deeper conversion. Somehow they need more of your peace or healing in their life. Lord, you know, Teach them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Give them encounters with you, Lord. You know, the risen Jesus Christ can appear to them and change everything like he did with Paul. Lord, bring, appear to him, Lord. You know, how much time are we spending, you know, upset and frustrated versus how much time we're redirecting all that energy for intercessory prayer and try to wear God out. More time, Lord. More time, Lord. More time. More time for me, Lord. More time for me. I'm just barely getting into the full gospel myself, Lord. You know? <clears throat> so this is, this is what the, the, this, the message of, that Abraham is showing us by example. This persistent prayer, intercessory prayer for other people. For other people. You know? Lord, will you spare California for ten righteous? Are there 10 righteous? You know, God doesn't need a lot of righteous people anyway, right? He, he, he doesn't need numbers. He needs quality of, of heart, right? That's what we learned from, from Gideon, you know. He had 30,000 soldiers, and God said, oh, just, you know, too many, huh? Too many. They'll think that they were strong enough to destroy the enemy, you know. So, you know, tell the ones who are afraid to leave. So 20,000 left. Then he did a little test on how they drink, how they, you know, how they drink their water. Bring it up to their hand, or they go down and lick. You know, which ones are being attentive while they drink? Which ones are, you know, lapping it up like a dog? He said, those are ones I like, a wild dog of people. 
And so they only had 300. From 30,000 to 300. So God doesn't care about numbers. Just, what he liked about those 300 is they were all willing to obey unto death. Whatever they were going to be asked to do, and all they were asked to do is scream really loud, take these pots, throw them on the ground, blow the trumpets, make a lot of noise. <laughs> and that's what God's asking us. Will you be, you know, the obedience of faith? That's what he's looking for in upright people. Upright people have the obedience of faith. If God stirs in your heart to go and talk to somebody and pray for them, to speak a word into their life that will build them up or to pray for them for healing, to pray for somebody to be raised from the dead, will you obey that prompting inside you? Do you have obedience of faith? Or is that out of your comfort zone? Is that for somebody else who's more charismatic? Or is that for basic disciples of Jesus Christ? <clears throat> what is it that's holding you back from being all in or for God? What is it that God may be asking you to get out of your comfort zone and step out into the darkness to scatter it? What's he asking you to do? It always begins with prayer time, daily prayer time, so we're filled up with the life of God. If you're able, daily Mass, you see the Eucharist get filled up with the life of God. But now that you're filled up, you've got to go. Freely you have received, freely you must give, as Jesus says in the Gospel. So how are you going to, that life of God you're filled up with, how are you going to go pour that into somebody else's life? How are you going to get out of your bubble, comfort zone bubble? How are you going to step into the darkness today and this week and start to scatter it with the life and the light and the truth of God? Every one of us have a part. This is the place we come, the safe place where we get filled up. And then we're sent out there. So Father, we just thank you so much for your truth and your life within us, especially with your Holy Spirit in us with Jesus in us, especially in the Eucharist and all the sacraments. We pray, Lord, you just continue to stir us up inside, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. As you fill us up with your grace in this Mass and in the Eucharist, fill us up in our prayer times, we ask you, Lord, to show us, very, show us clearly how to take a step out into the darkness, Lord, so, we can, so, so you can scatter the darkness through our life. Just one step at a time, one heart at a time, one person at a time, one blessing at a time, Lord. Help us to bless more than the darkness is cursing. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen.